Stand as you are able and be called to worship. We have come not to exalt our own goodness, but to praise the holiness of God. We have come not to boast of what we have done, but to proclaim the redeeming work of Jesus Christ. With all our being, we will praise God and tell of God's goodness and our acts of kindness and love. God's glory. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to all who worship with us this morning, whether online or in the sanctuary. Please sign the attendance book at the end of each pew as we love knowing you're here. We want to offer a special welcome to our first time guests. We invite you to stop by the table in the narthex as you exit it and pick up your free gift. And we also invite you to follow the crowd as it will be moving over to the fellowship hall to enjoy coffee and brunch. Today at 1115, family ministry, children, and anyone else that would like to help 
will be packing snack sacks for the homeless in the library. Many hands make the work go faster. And if you are unable to lend your hands, a check marked snack sacks will always be welcome and of help. Our fall Bible study has begun and uh, continues on Wednesday at 7 p.m. and Tuesday at 10, uh, reading the book of Exodus. Please read chapters 5 through 8 this week before class. Coming Friday, October 11th, a uh, drive-in movie in the church parking lot with Soul Food Cafe concession stand. Watch for more information. However, before that, on the 28th of this month, the United Methodist Women will be having a fall festival. This is an activity to finance, uh, underwrite the mission programs of the United Methodist Women. There will be a bake sale and lots of other things uh, that you might find useful for your everyday uh, life or for your holiday giving. After the sale or during the sale at um, lunch, the Koreans will be uh, feasting us with a barbecue uh, Korean lunch. So I'm sure you'll all want to partake of that. We will be doing this during the hours of 9 to 3. So please plan to attend. At this time, we have two special announcements from Peggy Walters and Susan. Good morning, everyone. Saturday, October 26th at 9 a.m., a bus is going to leave from the parking lot at here. We're going to go down to the International Printing Museum. I'm sure that most of you have heard of the Gutenberg Bible. That was the very first time that print was available to the general public. And printing is listed as one of the top 10 accomplishments of mankind throughout the ages. We all read newspapers. We all watch the scroll on the bottom of television, choir reads music. It is one of the most important accomplishments we have ever, ever done. And part of the tour, the first hour at the museum, will be going through Franklin's Press, the Gutenberg Press. We'll be able to see an actual page printed off the Gutenberg Press for a, of a Bible. Of the maybe 180 of the Gutenberg Bibles that were printed, and it took three years to print them all, there are about 49 in various forms of completion, either on paper or vellum. There's one that sits at the Library of Congress. One that's not complete, but available to view is out at the Huntington Library. And all of you who have seen that have, I hope, marveled as I did. I hope you all decide to take this tour. The second part of the tour, it's about two hours, will be a costumed actor in Ben Franklin garb, um, talking about his printing and how his printing press helped and poor Richard's almanac and all the printing that he did to help move forward in the Revolutionary War. So please join me. I will be down in the fellowship hall at the table to take sign-ups and do consider coming. Like I said, it, printing is one of the most monumentous things that man has ever discovered and it has ever made a difference in our lives going forward. So please join us. Thank you. Good morning. It's almost time for my weekly announcement here from the Staff Parish Relations Committee. Um, I'd wanted to let you know that this week the SPRC approved a job description and salary package for a full-time director of Christian education here at Northridge United Methodist Church. This staff position will supervise and coordinate several of our ministries, including our Sunday school, preschool through young adult, youth ministries, young adult ministries, the youth and children's summer ministries, family ministries, and our confirmation program. Since we will not be hiring an associate pastor at this time, we envision that the director of Christian education will be handling a number of the duties that Pastor Karen formerly handled. 
And they will also um, lead the programs that Jason, our, youth direct, our former youth director, handled. Um, in case you're interested, the job announcement is out, and you can see it. It's, on, it's actually posted on the California Pacific Conference website. So as we're recruiting for this position and hoping to fill it soon, we ask that you keep these ministries in your prayers so that we may find the best individual suited to help lead our children, youth, young adults, and families in their journey to learn about God and Jesus Christ's teachings. Thank you, and have a blessed worship. I'm sure we all appreciate Susan keeping us abreast of what the uh, staff pa pastor parish uh, committee does because it involves and affects all of us in the church family. Please read the bulletin for all other activities of the church, which there are many, and have a blessed worship. God in prayer together. We'll have the names of our church members who do need prayers on the screen. Please remember them in your prayer and remember your loved ones and ourselves as we go to God in prayer together. Let us pray. Our loving and holy, gracious, most merciful God, we are so thankful for the life and the health that you have given us today to come into your house to worship you. We are so thankful for the things that you have been providing in our life and help us to be grateful each day and each moment as we recognize your goodness in our lives. And as we come into your house, Lord, to worship you and to truly bring our hearts to you, we lift up our prayers to you at this time. Especially will you lift up our members who do need prayers. We'll lift up Barbara Wheeler, Barbara Clark, and Jack Kister, Don Miller, Christian Coons, Ted Barclow, and even those names that we have in our hearts, and you know who they are. As we always pray, be with them and be with us at this time as we bring our hearts to you in worship to you as a living sacrifice that is holy and pleasing to you, Lord God. Let this hour of worship be so holy to you so that we may be transformed and changed 
by your grace so that we may be the person that you want us to be. And we pray this all in the name of Jesus Christ, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The ushers will now receive our tithes and offerings.
Accept, O Lord, these offerings your people make to you, and grant that the work to which they are devoted may prosper under your guidance to the glory of your name. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture this morning comes from Exodus, the fourth chapter, verses one through five. In the previous chapter and verses, uh, God has informed Moses of his intention to liberate the Israelites in Egypt, and he has chosen Moses to be his emissary. Now Moses has already given two reasons why this isn't a good idea, and today's scripture uh, deals with his third reason, credibility. Then Moses answered, but suppose they do not believe me or listen to me, but say, the Lord did not appear to you. The Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? And he said, a staff. And he said, throw it on the ground. So he threw the staff on the ground and it became a snake. And Moses drew back from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand and seize it by the tail. So he reached out his hand and grasped it, and it became a staff in his hand, so that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word.
God, I hope and pray that we will never be the same as we leave this place. We will be transformed and renewed and changed by God's grace as we leave this place by the Holy Spirit. We will begin our new sermon series on the book of Exodus, which, is mean, which means exit, coming out. So we are going to start this new sermon series and the Bible study for 10 weeks. So if you are able to come out to the Bible study, please do come out. We will be studying chapters 5 through 8 this week. We have Wednesday and Thursday morning sessions. And for each Sunday, I will be sharing the message from the assigned chapters that we are reading each week. For this week, we read chapters 1 through 4 last week, and then I will be preaching from chapter 4. The sermon title is, What is that in your hand? And as we know that Moses run, was running for his life because he was wanted for murder in Egypt. Do you know how old he was when he left Egypt? He was 40 years old. And do you know how old he was when God called him in the book of Exodus chapter 3? 80. 40 years has gone by. He, is, he was 80 years old when God called him. So if you are not even 80, your life hasn't begun yet. <laughs> In fact, I will say that your life hasn't begun if you haven't met God in your life. Moses' life changed, and his real life, true life began when he met God at the age of 80. In fact, in our church, I brag about the fact that we have so many people who are over 80 and 90. I mean, it's such a blessing that we have those elders in our church, in our midst, who are a good example of God's love and Christian service to God in their lives. Moses was 80 years old, but we need to understand that, like I said, he was wanted for murder in Egypt because he killed and murdered Shaman in Egypt, right? Other Egyptian. That's why he fled. So he was living in the Median Desert for 40 years, but now God is urging him, telling him to go through Egypt to deliver the people out of Egypt, the Jews, the Hebrews. The thing is, do you believe and do you think that people will believe Moses even if he, want, he were to go back to Egypt and try to tell people that, you know what, I'm here to save you and rescue you from this land? That's why Moses was arguing with God in a way in chapter 3 and chapter 4 that he wasn't sure whether people would listen to him. Why should people listen to him or follow him after all? He wasn't sure whether people would listen to him and follow him. And he wasn't sure how he was going to convince them that God has sent Moses to them to deliver. And not only that, if we look at Exodus chapter 4, verse 10, Moses, he clearly says that he's not eloquent. That he clearly says to God that he's not a good speaker at all. That he clearly says that he has a slow tongue or speech. That he cannot really speak well to people. That he is not a born natural leader at all. So he was telling God all the excuses as to why he shouldn't go. But here's a question that God is asking Moses in verse 2 of chapter 4. What is that you have in your hand? What is that you have in your hand? Moses was holding a staff that any ordinary shepherds would be holding at the time, right? 
And Moses responded saying, a staff. Moses did not know that God will be using him through his staff throughout his life. Many times I see in my own life and in my ministry that God often uses our weaknesses both to help ourselves and to help others. And that's why Jesus said to Apostle Paul, when Apostle Paul was dealing with his own disease, that we do not know what kind of sickness or physical conditions that he had, but Apostle Paul was urging God or praying to God for three times to take this something that he was dealing with from him three times. But God said to Apostle Paul, saying that 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, God said to him, My power is made perfect in, in weakness. My power is made perfect in weakness. Yes, God uses our weakness. Whatever we might have in our hands and whatever we might have in our lives, whenever we, we offer it to God, God uses whatever we have that we are willing to offer to God, God uses it for God's glory, even our weaknesses. Let me give an example. For those leaders who are at the support groups, NA or AA or EA, those leaders are the people who have had similar issues or the problems in their lives, right? But now they are there to lead the groups. Isn't that true? That they were there and they've been there and they understand what other people are going through with the similar situations or similar problems. So they are there to help them out because they were there in the past. Henny Now, some of you know Henny Now so well, Christian author, he said that it is not only God is healing you or God is working to heal you, but God is also healing others through you to make you a what? Wounded healer. That God is not only working to heal us, but God is also working to heal others through us. Through us to make us a wounded healer that we have been wounded in so many ways. We have been broken in so many ways. But God is using us with all those brokenness and wounds that we might have. God is using those weaknesses that we have to help other people, to heal other people. Such healings will not take place through a person who has all the answers. But such healing will take place for those people or through those people who have understand and understood and who have experiences the pain and grace of God. Those people who have had those pains and brokenness in their lives, they're able to help others out as well. I think it was Ernest Hemingway who first used the phrase, growing strong in the broken places. Growing strong in the broken places. The idea behind that phrase is that when Born is broken, and when it gets healed, it becomes the strongest part of that bone, right? Whatever you have gone through in your lives, God wants to use you. What is that, what is that you have in your hand? God is asking. For Moses, his staff. The staff is what Moses had. This staff symbolizes Moses' life, and it also symbolizes Moses' pain, struggles, and hardships that he has gone through. Moses will use this staff to perform miracles in Egypt. Out of the ten miracles that he performed, at least three of them he used the staff. And not only that, when in chapter 14, verse 16, we all know this verse so well in Exodus chapter 14, verse 16, when he stood in front of the Red Sea, do you know what God call, told him to do? God told Moses, Moses, raise your staff. 
and stretch out your hand. And when he did that, the Red Sea was divided. And not only that, in Exodus chapter 17, in fact, God told Moses to raise the step once again and stretch out hand, similar thing again. And when he did that in front of the rock at Horeb, when they had no water in the wilderness, the water came out from the rock when Moses lifted up this step. God is using whatever that you have in your hand, that you are willing to offer it to God for God's kingdom and God's glory. And for those young people who may be here at this time, you may be wondering, are you talking to only those people who are 80 and up? If you look at 1 Samuel chapter 17, and verse 40, David stood in front of Goliath. But according to 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 40, Moses had sling in his hand. He had his sling in his hand, according to the scripture. And when he used his sling, the Goliath came down. When he used whatever he had in his hand for the glory of God, he was able to bring the Goliath down. In John chapter 6, verse 9, this little boy had his lunch, right? How many loaves? Five loaves of bread and? See, our folks are so smart. I don't know how you got it. Five loaves of bread and two fish. When this little boy offered this lunch, his lunch, whatever he had in his hand to God, God used it for the glory of God. And many people were satisfied. How about you today? What do you have in your life that you are struggling with? What do you think that you have in your life that you consider to be weakness in your life? In our Bible study last week, we were talking about as to why God used Moses. As to why God used Moses. Because God could have used someone else, the one who are really eloquent and who is a good speaker, right? And God, in fact, also used Aaron, Moses' brother, God could have just used Aaron in the first place, right? Not deal with Moses. God didn't have to go through this nonsense with Moses in chapter 3 and verse, chapter 4, right? God could have just called Moses, no, not Moses, Aaron in the first place. But God called Moses. And people had different reasons why they think why God had to use Moses. Some people thought that because Moses had the political powers and some kind of influence in Egypt. But I share my thought with our folks in our Bible study that I believe that God used Moses because, like according to Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, God said to God's people that Moses is the humble person. That Moses, according to what God was saying, that Moses was the most humble person on the face of the earth. The ability God could always provide. God is able to provide all the abilities that we need in our lives. God could provide the eloquency and God could provide all those resources that we need in our lives to carry on the ministry. But God is looking for those people who are weak, those people who are fragile, and those people who are willing to give their lives to God. God is looking for those who are humble enough to recognize that they need God in their lives, that they cannot do anything without God's grace. God is looking for those who are so willing to give their hearts to God, humbled and thankful all the time. How about us? Don't look at your situations or the things that you do not have. Offer God whatever that you have at this time. Whatever age that you may be at, offer your life to God. Give whatever that you have in your hand. And let's 
Let us see God, how God uses whatever that we have in our hands for the glory of God. It's not too late. Like I said, your real life begins when you have God in your heart. Whether you are 80, 90, or 100, whether you are only 15 or 20, whatever you, that you have gone through in your life, your life begins with God. So trust in God and offer your heart to God and see what God does to heal our lives and others through us as well. Let's all stand and sing our closing hymn as we remember this message. Here I am, Lord. What is that in your hand? What is that you have in your life? God is asking us today. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us as we offer our lives to God, now and forever. Amen.